Hello, it's David from David Savory Electrical Services Limited, and welcome to another New Toy Tuesdays, an occasional slot where I show off something shiny that has come my way. Items I show here are new to me, if not to the market, and may either be something I've purchased directly or be supplied to me by a manufacturer or wholesaler for trial or review. Beware, however, reviews are honest and I will point out any flaws as I see them. And today we're looking at the Ferret Wi-Fi camera. You know, as an electrician, it's not uncommon to find oneself stiffed over by another trade from time to time. Take this recent example that I posted on Twitter, where post first fix, a plumber had turned up to site, drilled a hole for pipe work from the outside without measuring and checking for our prescribed zone, and subsequently smashed through our capped cable and a big chunk of the plaster work. Upon realising his mistake, he figured, well, the hole's there now, and proceeded to nick our prescribed zone for his pipe work, leaving us with a repair and reroute task. Today we're on a different site that has its own careless builder. We've already had problems here in previous weeks uh, where a nail was walloped through a fan feed cable necessitating repair uh, and a downlight switch and um, switch drop were moved out of place resulting in our having to uh, cut up new chipboard flooring to get them back to where they were supposed to be. And now today, once again, I find that our carefully measured downlight holes in this room seemingly have no cables waiting behind them. Uh, of course, this situation is fortunately rare, but nothing new, and it just means we won't be working with this builder again. But we have specialist tools that can get us out of this kind of jam. Um, I've mentioned previously in my five lesser known tools video, the FUW, which is handy for hooking wires. Um, um, but today we're going to be breaking out the Endoscope camera and something new and exciting, uh, the Ferret Wi-Fi, which I have high hopes will deliver us from this particular dilemma. But uh, it's annoying, you know, I mean, this is supposed to be a, a quick visit this morning uh, and now we're going to have our day's schedule uh, put out just because Knob the Builder has inexplicably moved our first fixed cabling out of position before boarding the ceiling. And before engaging the plasterer to come and skim it and the decorator to paint it. So now uh, if we can't find our cables, we can't even open this up from below without damaging final finishes. Uh, I imagine he's moved the cables when putting in the insulation, uh, but they were clipped to the joist. So he's gone to some effort to yank the cables off and fit the, uh, the insulation without figuring that they need to be approximately where we left them. You know, ordinarily in such circumstances, I'd just call the builder a bit of a cock and I'd refuse to work with them again. And uh, obviously I could charge the client for having to make good what's, uh, what's been buggered up and taken up my time. But you know what? I can't be, we're on YouTube here. I can't be seen to be on a public forum taking one up the bum from a dodgy builder. So uh, we're gonna get some revenge here for all you sparkers out there who've ever been shortchanged by another trade. This guy's gone off site and left his toolbox here. Oh yes. Is that in frame? Jolly good. Now, I understand that there'll be those of you who say, you know, this simply isn't cricket, David. You can't do that. That's another man's gear. But, you know, what the hell? We've all wanted to do it. And next time, maybe I'll think twice before screwing over a bloody electrician. Okay, first up for getting me out of bother here is my traditional endoscope camera. This is one I've had uh, since starting the business back in 2012. It's made by Rigid uh, and it was, uh, it's a fairly cheap one, uh, 75 quid back in the day there, I believe, if I remember rightly. Uh, it's got a colour LCD screen on it and it allows me to poke into holes by a good sort of half metre or so. There used to be a hook attachment for the end, but I lost that a long time ago. If I uh, turn it on, you can see the, the LEDs come on the end and I get a picture on the screen. There's a little arrow on top to tell me which way is up, so I can orientate that to be pointing the right way and then shove it in the hole and hopefully get to see a little deeper into things. Like I say, it saved my ass on numerous occasions this thing has. Uh, the only trouble is it's a bit unwieldy to use. The, the snake end of it needs to be necessarily stiff enough that it's not flopping around up there, but it also makes it hard to adjust and you lose your orientation quickly. It's already twisted slightly here and sometimes you lose track of where you are with it and which way is up. 
uh, and which one you're looking at. So it's um, it's handy, but it has its limitations. I can't seem to see much here with it today. And what I, I think I need to fish around with in here is something that has a bit more flexibility. Something ideally that would attach to my, the end of my super rods would uh, probably be the best thing for this sort of job. And that's exactly where today's new toy comes in. From the clever folks at the Cable Ferret Company in New Zealand comes a self-contained camera that works with a super rod set. Okay, a quick peek first of all before we get this dirty on site. You can see it's, it's nice and small, it's lightweight. The, uh, the head of the thing is perhaps larger than the normal endoscope camera, so you need a larger hole for it to get through. Uh, but that's okay because uh, in usually circumstances like we have today where we need it and where the hole is already plenty big enough. Uh, with the rear cover in place it's rated to IP67. If I remove that rear cover it reveals a USB-C charging port for the lithium-ion battery contained within and the power switch. It also comes with a short USB-C charge cable so if you lack such then uh, it does come with what you need there. Okay, jolly good. Now it's got a couple of, uh, well, it's got an O-ring around here uh, in order to maintain that IP67 seal, and it comes with a couple of spares, as you can see. So uh, you've got that for your uh, longevity uh, of the product. Although I don't, don't think I'm going to be using it anywhere um, underwater myself, unless I perhaps drop my van keys down the drain or something. Uh, anyway, uh, we have uh, a couple of six millimeter threads fore and aft on this thing for direct connection to super rod accessories. Um, but if your rods are of a different thread size, and I carry some thin ones in my toolbox, some cheapo thin ones I got when I first started, it does come with an array of adapters that allow you to convert a different thread into one that is compatible, which is rather nice. I, although these are work with six millimeter threads i believe they are compatible with the imperial threads that are used stateside so uh, if you're over in that neck of the woods it should work with the rods over there uh, just as it would with the uh, metric rods that we're using over here Okay, included in the ferret set uh, besides these thread adapters is a couple of uh, short rods we've got a 15 centimeter gooseneck and if i put that on the rear of the product i can use that to perhaps angle it around a corner a little bit and i've got a rigid rod here which if i would put that on the forward connection would allow me to attach the supplied hook or magnet to the end uh, so that they sit ahead of the camera and i can see what i'm trying to fish for what i'm trying to grab so uh, that's all jolly good Okie dokie. Now it being compatible with the Super Rod sets means that, as you'd expect, my myriad array of existing Super Rod adapters are all uh, directly compatible with it. I've got various hooks, chains, magnets, etc. amongst this lot here, and any one of them I, I would be able to, to fit into, into the, uh, the threaded hole on this. So it gives me more flexibility than the endoscope camera because I can take any one of my existing uh, connection pieces and fit it to this thing. Uh, similarly, if Superrod make some new connection piece I don't have that offers me additional functionality, then obviously I can purchase that and, and get even more out of the product. Uh, so that's all rather nice. Um, now, okay, I guess you're looking at and thinking, Okay, well, where's the video output port on this thing? How do I see what the camera is looking at? Well, there is no wired connection and it's not Bluetooth either. Instead, like my brother label printer I looked at about a year ago, this broadcasts as a Wi-Fi hotspot when switched on. So I was on site, all you have to do is switch your phone or tablet to the Ferret Wi-Fi network and you can then fire up the app and see directly what the camera is looking at. I should say though that despite the IP rating, it does say that use underwater, underground or in metallic conduit would block the Wi-Fi signal, so do bear that in mind. So anyway, hopefully with the array of rods, adapters and the ability to now see what's going on at the far end, hopefully I can find where my cables are, hook them and get this job done and dusted in time for lunch.
one down, three to go. Having now used it to get me out of a scrape, uh, there are a couple of things to mention on it. First of all, the, the rod connection at the top here, I find that when you try and get it through the hole, the natural movement of the thing is for it to flop down to one side. So um, that being um, up, as far as the camera's concerned, what I'm finding is as I'm rodding along, it flops to the side and I'm seeing a view sort of from the side. Uh, it'd be good if one of these things could be made with a, um, uh, a um, sensor in it to adjust the camera orientation as you roll it or to have that option. I don't know how practical that sort of thing would be. Um, but at the moment, uh, if, I, if I put it up, I, I can't keep that rod at the top. It's just not going to naturally stay there. The weight of the thing causes it to fall one way or the other and I end up uh, again, like with the endoscope camera, losing my orientation a bit. I do find as well, I think that the, the LEDs at the front perhaps um, aren't, aren't as bright as I'd like simply um, because the video, when, you look, when you're looking at it, uh, it, it is quite dark. It's you're not seeing much uh, in front of you that's um, as much in front of you as you would perhaps like. And to be fair, <coughs> excuse me, it's the same with the endoscope camera. That's got the same sort of limitation. And I suppose that's just down to how many powerful white LEDs you can mount on the front of this thing without it sucking up the battery power or becoming a little unwieldy. Thinking about the lighting issue, one thing I could potentially do is I've got one of these uh, rod ends here, these illuminated rod ends, which if I screw that onto the end of this rod here, this is from my super rod set, set and you can see it gives me a little white LED light on the end, which is handy when you're shoving a rod through into a ceiling or something and you want to go and pick it up in the attic afterwards, uh, makes it easier to find. But I was wondering, or I was thinking rather that uh, if I were to attach that to the end of the ferret Wi-Fi, it would give me a protrusion that has some additional illumination, as well as having something there that will help to push things like insulation out of the way, out of the way of the camera lens rather than the front of the camera lens being the, the thing that's sort of butting up against the insulation. So I think that could potentially work rather well. The only trouble is by putting, uh, because this light needs the male end of the rod to go into it in order for it to actuate, uh, it leaves me with the female end, which I can't couple to the female connector on the ferret Wi-Fi. So I'm going to need a male to male adapter. I do have in my set a female to female coupler, but not a male to male. So it's all on a bit uh, gender fluid at this end, but um, I'm going to need to, to perhaps see if Superrod makes such an adapter and pick one up so that I can attach that to that, which I think uh, will help to uh, make it even more useful. Okay, let's have a look at the app in action. And I'm using my rather superb little Lenovo tablet here. Very good bit of kit, that. It cost you a ton, I believe. Uh, it's rather dusty because uh, it's out on site here, but um, nevertheless, it's uh, pretty bulletproof and I've got the Ferret Wi-Fi app on there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the camera on and we should see the LEDs illuminate as indeed they have. Now, what that is doing now is it's broadcasting as its own Wi-Fi network. If I go into settings, uh, wireless LAN and go into the wireless menu. I've got here ferret Wi-Fi, no internet access. Uh, I mean it's broadcasting as a Wi-Fi connection, of course, but it's not got not one that's got any kind of internet access, not that we need it. So this is now broadcasting as a Wi-Fi network. The tablet is connected to it and moaning that it's got no internet access. But now I can launch the ferret Wi-Fi app and we can see what the camera is looking at. Um, the first time you open the app, you may have to set some app perm permissions uh, for microphone and for storage. We'll have a look at why that is in just a moment. But uh, one of the things I can do with the app is I can control the lighting. I'm just going to adjust the lights. Uh, hello? If I do that, we can see it goes brighter. And then it goes off completely. I'm just going to do that so it's not glaring on the screen. So I've got this rather curious infinite loop going on here, which I rather like. Oh, that's spooky, isn't it? OK, that's pointed out the window, shall we? Uh, what we can do with the app then, uh, we've got a few features. It's a nice, simple app. There's, there's not a lot to it, which is good for someone like me who doesn't want to be bogged down by too many options. Uh, we can take a snapshot. We can take a video without sound. We can take a video with sound. Now, there's no microphone in this thing, uh, so any sound is coming from your recording device, such as your mobile phone or tablet. Um, so uh, if you're shoving this somewhere, uh, you can uh, potentially annotate what you're looking at. So I can record my voice on here and that's now recording my voice. Uh, so I could be saying what I'm looking at and, and making voice notes to accompany the video that I'm recording using the device.
And if we go into the gallery, there's my picture that I just took. I wish it were barbecue weather. I don't know how well you can hear that, but it is actually speaking to me. The um, what I just said while I recorded that segment of video a moment ago. So there you go, that works rather well. We also have a battery indicator on there. What happens when you press that? Well, nothing it seems. Uh, although that will obviously show you when there is a low battery warning, which I have seen out on site. And uh, that's one thing to mention actually. Obviously, you know, um, it is a small form factor. Uh, it is doing a lot. So you can't expect miracles with the battery life. Therefore, if you're likely to be using it in anger on a site, as we've just been, um, you can deplete the battery uh, fairly speedily and you might need to have some means of boosting that charge there. We carry a, um, a USB power pack around. Uh, I've got one in my toolbox that I carry around, uh, which is just the job for this sort of thing. So you might need to think about that if you're going to be using it. Obviously today this thing has been fairly instrumental in getting us out of trouble, but it turns out there's another thing we need it to do here today. Our initial verification on this site has determined that there's a fault with our lighting cable. Uh, we think that knob the builder, can he whack a nail through it? Yes he can, as perhaps uh, punctured our cable uh, with a nail, uh, using his nail gun when he's put the skirting on. Uh, they, we've got no continuity here on the grey three core that goes from this switch point to the one downstairs. If I just angle the camera down, uh, oh, not very smoothly, you can see down here my magnet picks up a nail directly in line with that switch position so uh, I think he's perhaps got just a little over enthusiastic with the nail gun when he's put the, uh, put the, put the skirting on. Uh, and that's just careless because this is a steel capped cable. Um, it would have been visible here when the skirting was put on. He's just not not put a lot of um, care into it. He's, I think he's glued that on and then come along with an nail gun afterwards and secured it without due consideration for what's there. Uh, IR testing shows that many of the cores are affected and there's no um, nothing leaking between them, but the grey is um, broken end to end. And you know, it's only sort of a five, six metre run, something like that, so it's, it's not a long cable, but uh, in order to try and fix this, I think we're going to need to pull this skirting board off, and which, as you can see, it's all final finished, it's been painted, sealed up, uh, the carpet's on. That's going to be uh, pretty damaging to have to repair, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, some of the cable is visible from below because we have down lights in the hall immediately below me here. So what we're going to do now is use the ferret camera to visually verify as much of that cable as possible. Because it might not be this, um, I mean that, that's my smoking gun for the moment, but it might be that the plumber or whoever when he's run his pipes uh, after we've put our cables in has perhaps caught the cable and done some damage to it. Uh, but there are a couple of places where that cable is going to be visible below me if I take the down lights out. And I'm going to use this to visually verify what I can see of it. I wanted to show you this because until now if I needed to get the endoscope camera in a downlight hole to see what's going on behind there then I'm in this rather uncomfortable position of squeezing my hand into the hole. We normally drill out a 76 millimeter hole so I'm squeezing my hand into there. I've got the end, gooseneck of the endoscope going through there as well. I've got the cables dangling down for the downlight. Uh, it's all a bit tight and it usually results in abrasions around the wrist and a lot of slang language for various lady parts uttered at an antisocial volume. So having to grip and twist the camera to maintain orientation and get positioning is all a bit of a pain in the bars. The bit between your bollocks and your arse. Anyway, let's put that down and this is perhaps where the, the ferret camera comes to the fore once again because uh, even without it being on the rods I can hold it and get my hand up there to see what's going on behind um, up above the ceiling here um, uh -huh, okay and because they, the gooseneck's not going through there I've got more room to maneuver uh, obviously I can't get quite as far in as the endoscope camera in this in this way but I can always still attach rods to it of course um, but this um, this allows me to take a peek up here in a much more comfortable fashion and see see what we're looking at behind here hang on Nigel I've got this bloody builder calling me hello David speaking 
Yes, funnily enough, we are still on site. Uh, we're just about to finally pack up, in fact. We should have finished ages ago, but it seems whichever bucket head boarded and insulated the ceiling moved our downlight cables all out of place. Uh, I wonder who could have done that? Plaster in my arse. You overboarded it and just got the plaster in for the skimming, didn't you? No, it's fuck all to do with me. Well, you appointed the plasterer. It's, uh, you oversaw the work. Yeah. The book still stops with you. Homeowner hired the plasterer. The homeowner hired the plasterer. I never met him before. So you haven't moved our downlight cables? No, I haven't touched them. Okay. Uh, what time are you back here? Five minutes, but I ain't got no key, so don't bother. Uh, okay. Well, we'll be gone in two minutes, but we'll leave the uh, door unlocked for you, okay? Yeah, Sorry. cheers. Shit. Uh, Nige, we may have spiked the wrong guy's toolbox here. I think we'd better do something rather un-British now and scarper rather sharpish and uh, maybe we'll catch up with him later when he's had a, had a chance to cool down. Go, go, go. Well, I suppose we should round things off by saying that communication on any construction site is very important and hijinks are not big, hard or indeed clever. Uh, so rounding off this video uh, about the ferret Wi-Fi cam, uh, I understand the price point is about the £150 mark exvat, uh, I believe, and uh, you know if I saw this at the Alex show where I know that they've been demonstrating it then uh, I'd, I'd probably take it for that, I think it's uh, worth a punt at that sort of price. Uh, I know you can blow a lot of money on specialist tools that you might not find you're actually using every day but it's one of those that when you need it it's going to uh, it's going to pay its way in time savings fairly quickly I imagine. Uh, for availability uh, you should see CEF stocking it from about May or June I believe. I'll put a, a link in the description when it shows live on their website. So I think that's all about all, about all we can say about it right now. Oh shit, we've left our toolboxes on site. Oh f we gotta go back. No. Oh, Actually I think mine's safe as it's under the stairs. I don't know about your open tote Stanley though, Nige. I reckon he's doing an angry poo into that right about now. <laughs>